Before I start this video, I'd like to start by saying that this video is sponsored by me. My channel is not monetized and I do not plan to monetize it anytime soon, if ever. But I would like to take a second to advertise my commissions. I'm currently job hunting while chilling with my aunt so I can afford to get a place of my own. And while I'm on the prowl for a job, my art commissions are what's paying for my food, gas, insurances, on top of other things. So if you would like to support me and my channel, you can inquire about an art commission through my Twitter DMs. Obviously I can't take too many commissions at a time without overloading myself, but I tend to get through my cues pretty quickly. And I communicate with my clients to ensure that you get exactly what you want out of your commissions. So if you're looking to get an art piece done of your your character and $75 to spare for a flat color commission, stop on by my DMs and we'll chat. Or if you'd like to show your support through a donation or tip of some kind, you can buy me a coffee. I made one rather recently for this occasion in particular, so ye. Thank you, me, for sponsoring this video. You're welcome, me. No problem, me. Now on with the video. So I spent lots of time trying to figure out what my next video should be. I teetered between a lot of ideas and even went as far as creating almost an entire video bringing awareness to a short animated Christmas special that holds a very dear place in my heart in the spirit of the holiday. No seriously, this video is pretty much done. All I have left to do is add my talk sprites on top of it. I may eventually end up finishing it and posting it to YouTube, but as I was working on it, I realized the video was basically just a Saber Spark video with less in-depth investigations on the history of the animation. So to avoid my comment sections from saying this is basically basically a watered down Saber Spark video. I decided to go ahead and scrap that video for the time being. But I wasn't going to give up there, no siree. I threw that video in the trash and I went back to the drawing board. I've stated in previous videos that I want to dip my toes into all sorts of different genres of content creation and I don't want to attach myself to one thing in particular. If I turn out to be better at certain things, then hey, I might do more of that. But why limit myself if I'm feeling the itch to do something different, you know? So which should the next video I do be? I asked myself with a possum scowl of deep pondering. And then, a fun idea came to me. Let's do a story time. Those are fun, right? Everybody loves a good story after all. And I think I have the perfect story to start with. So grab your peppermint mocha coffees and get settled into your out-of-date beanbag chairs, scoot in nice and close, and let me tell you all about the five finger slow reflex death punch. So I was a child that grew up in a house of boys. Technically, I only had one biological brother, but there was a group of about five other boys that were family friends that basically spent 90% of their time at my house growing up. We all became very close over time, and this group of boys eventually decided that I was the little sister and they were going to have brotherly roles in my life, which I absolutely loved and still do. We are all still very close as adults and consider each other family. One of my brothers, who we'll call Nick, actually was the one who married me and my ex-husband at my wedding. I love Nick. He's awesome. And Nick is relevant because his wife is actually what the story is centered around. So in high school, his senior year, Nick met this girl who we'll call Carly. Nick brought Carly to my house one time to introduce her to the fam. And I have to say, it was friendship at first sight. I absolutely adored this woman and our personalities just clicked and meshed so well. I'm sure Nick was happy to see that the two of us bonded so quickly over such a short period of time because after they both graduated from high school, Nick proposed to Carly, which of course I was just ecstatic about. I get to have this girl as basically a sister-in-law? Uh, hell yes. Pop the champagne, baby. Let's f***ing go. So the thing about Nick and Carly was that Nick and Carly were both of the mindset that they wouldn't live together before they were married. Which, you know, religious thing. Personally, I couldn't imagine living separate to my future husband before marrying him because, like recipe for disaster in a lot of cases. But I'm not gonna knock them because they're going almost 10 years strong and are still very much in love and happy together. So who am I to judge, you know? It worked for them, so good enough for me. Anyway, Carly was having some issues with home. So since she needed somewhere different to go and didn't believe in living with Nick at the time, the two of them humbly asked my grandmother if Carly could live with us until they got married, which the date of the wedding was to be determined. Obviously, I had no objections to the idea, uh, but I was still a sophomore in high school, so my opinion was moot in not the smack of the judge's hammer, so to speak. But fortunately, my grandmother was more than happy to give Carly harbor within our walls. The plans were made official, Carly packed her things, and she moved in with us. As you can imagine, Little Bean was just so excited to have a girl close to her age in the house for the first time. It was like I would finally have the sister I never had and always wanted. Our relationship while Carly was living with us really only strengthened our bond, and I feel we wouldn't be nearly as close as we are if it weren't for the two years we lived together. I think whatever entity in the universe every day for giving me that time with her. Sure, we had our disagreements from time to time, as most people who share a space have, but we truly became sisters throughout that time, and I'll always treasure those two years. But 
Anyways, while the two of us were living together, we tended to play pranks on each other, do silly fun sister things. Our favorite thing to do was what we called Walmart People, which was basically a game where we dressed up in the most absurd outfits and just go to Walmart and try to play it off like everything was normal. I have a few fun stories about our Walmart People escapades that I may do a story on at some point if this genre does well for me. But what this story today is about isn't silly pranks or doing Walmart People dressed in ghillie suits with battery-operated Christmas lights wrapped around our entire bodies. This is a story about something much more domestic. So over a two month span, Carly had made it her mission in life to jump scare me in any way she could. But unfortunately for her, I used to have really good hearing at the time. Typically on a normal day, after a long day of school and having finished my homework for the night, I would sit in front of the computer and draw on my little plug-in tablet. Carly would try to sneak up on me from behind while I had my headphones on and was staring intensely at the computer focused on my art. But the problem was I would always see her coming from my peripheral vision or I'd feel a hardwood shift under my feet and hear it creak through my headset. Yeah, I had like super bad hearing at the time. She'd usually jump up from behind my chair, grab my shoulders and shout as loud as she could to get me to jump. But since I always saw her coming, it never was enough to get a jump or even a gasp out of me. Carly tried with all her might to scare the ever living sh out of me for the whole two months. I could see how she was starting to see she was losing the war here, but she wasn't going to give up. She tried and tried she did, and she continued to fail and fail and fail. So eventually, I decided that I was going to try and scare her. It was time to show this girl how scaring people is done. Now, an important fact to know about me is that I am dangerously quiet. I have what some people would call silent footing. I don't make noise when I walk, and that's when I'm not even trying. I can basically become invisible if I choose, like a hobbit or a ninja. It was a commonly complained aspect about myself from my family members. I would just simply walk into the kitchen, go to the fridge, see somebody was already there, and I'd stand there silently and wait my turn. And when they turned around after finishing what they were doing, they'd always do that thing where they gasp <gasps> and clutch their chest tightly out of pure terror because they didn't realize I was standing there and that I'd even come into the room. This was a notoriously classic bean move. So as you can imagine, I was pretty confident in my ability to scare Carly. No problem, but I needed it to be the perfect moment, the optimal time to jump scare my dear sister figure, and finally the perfect time had come. I had just come home from school one day and my grandmother was cooking dinner in the kitchen. I set my backpack down by the staircase to the upstairs and I followed my nose into the kitchen. We had a pretty normal conversation. She asked me how my day was, I told her how it was, and I complimented the way the food was smelling. Then I noticed something. Carly wasn't anywhere to be seen which was very unusual at this time in my life. I wondered if maybe she was out with Nick for the night. So I asked my grandma where she was and she said, oh, Carly's downstairs watching a movie. Then I had an idea, an awful idea. The small bean had a wonderful, awful idea. My time had come. This was my moment and I would not let it go to waste. I made my way to the basement stairs and I sneakily snuck my way down the stairs. It only helped me in my efforts to be silent as the grave given the flooring on the stairs and to the basement and the basement itself was completely carpeted so I was really able to get that silent stealth footing in. So the way my basement was laid out was the staircase led to the entrance of the basement which was on the right side of the area. The basement then hooked around to the left where you were greeted with a pool table in the center of the room and past the pool table continuing to the left was the entertainment area where we had a small pellet stove two couches in an l-shaped form and a tv where we'd watch movies on family nights carly as my grandma had specified was sitting on the couch that had her back facing me and the pool table could this have been any more perfect no it couldn't have. It was like the universe was begging for this moment to happen. So I used all my tools at my disposal to ensure that Carly would not see or hear me coming. When I knew for certain Carly wouldn't be able to see me, I quickly rushed behind the pool table. I took a peek to make sure I hadn't been compromised. And as expected, my victim was completely unaware. So I pressed on. I proceeded to lay flat on my stomach and I army crawled underneath the pool table, slowly but surely and very quietly. Every inch was taken with extreme care and precision until I finally reached the end of the pool table. Fortunately, there wasn't much space between the end of the pool table and the back of the couch Carly was sitting on for me to cover. So I continued to take my time and inched my way closer 
and closer to the back of Carly's couch. I'm sure I made it a little bit of noise, but because Carly was watching a movie, rather loudly I might add, the TV masked any sounds I may have made while schlubbing around on the floor. I carefully got into a crouching position and shuffled my way to be underneath the arm of the sofa that Carly was leaning on. Honestly, it's a miracle she didn't notice me at this point since I was so nervous my head would poke over the top of the arm of the couch, but thankfully, I was not spotted behind the enemy lines before I was ready. I positioned myself to be facing Carly and I just sat there crouched for a few minutes. I needed it to be the perfect time. I waited for a rather suspenseful moment in the movie she was watching, making sure that her adrenaline would already be high and it would intensify the scare that I was about to lay on her even more so. Finally, the moment was right. The scene in the movie was tense. Carly was on the edge of her seat waiting to find out what would happen next. And in a swift leap, I jumped up from the side of the couch and I just let out the loudest scream I could. Carly's head just whooshed in my direction and she just stared at me with wide eyes and a mouth gaping open with just pure shock and terror. She just kept staring and eventually I leaned closer as I started to ask if she was okay. Did I give this girl a heart attack? She was worrying me. Uh, like she was dead quiet. I have to say she stared at me for like a solid five to seven seconds. Then suddenly out of nowhere, I just saw this fist come flying toward me and there was a, just a solid connect between her knuckles and my chin. I immediately retreated back, holding my face as one would after they'd just been punched. First I was shell shocked. I had been punched, like actually punched. I wouldn't say it hurt, but more so that it was just surprising. I looked at her, she looked at me, and she just immediately started apologizing profusely. I was just in disbelief. At first, all I could manage to say was, you punched me? A few times. She was laughing uncontrollably while apologizing, and eventually I started laughing too. I mean, it's pretty f***ing funny if I'm being honest. I know it was scary, but I didn't think I was that scary for you to punch me, I said. And she replied, I didn't mean to punch you, it was just a reflex. I stood there confused for a second. A reflex? This bitch stared me dead in the eyes for a whole five seconds before finally wailing a good one on my chin. How on earth was that a reflex? It took you five whole seconds for your reflexes to kick in? At this point, the two of us were just laughing our asses off. I was rolling on the floor and she was draped over the side of the couch, heaving with laughter. We laughed about this for the next 10 minutes or so and I kept making fun of her reflexes being so slow. I mean, like... What if I'd been a kidnapper or a murderer or something? And she reacted that slowly. I would hope her fight or flight would kick in sooner if a genuinely life-threatening situation were to arise. Or perhaps she really just wanted to punch me in the face after scaring the absolute shit out of her. I don't know. But either way, it's a fun story that's been immortalized within our family circle and now has been immortalized on YouTube. But anyways, that's the story. There's nothing too crazy, I guess aside from being punched in the face because I scared someone too well. But long story short, I should work in a haunted house because shit, I am good at scaring people. Before I end this video, I'd just like to give a shout out to After Hours Studios on YouTube. They do a bunch of fantastic dubs and voiceovers for a lot of artists, myself included. They've done a bunch of dubs for my older Sonic AU comics back when I was in the Sonic community and are currently working on my Tooniverse comic dubs as well. I also have a motion graphic novel fan project called Mecha Maniacs that will be hosted on their channel once it's done. It's basically if Toon characters were anime, and it was a Mecha Gundam-like anime. Fun stuff. They are a very talented group of voice actors that deserve your attention and support. So if you like high quality comic dubs and haven't checked them out yet, go watch some of their dubs and give them a like and a sub. You won't regret it. I'll leave the link to their channel and Twitter account in the bio. Okay, bye.